What's up guys? My name is Rick and we are back with another Thumbcraft 3 God video. Last uh, video we researched uh, Illumentum and basic transmutions and things like that. Um, I would like to add with the basic transmutions. Um, there are a few more like there's um just uh, silver and copper. But it's basically like the same um, researching for this. You just need like met metallum and uh, the uh, the ar arrow one. I forget what it's called. And there's like one more tree, but it'll show up by then. So yeah, now that we're done with that, we got some thomium stuff here. So we'll get some. Stuff for that and let's get a researching all right so I got some thomium so let's put it in here and boop we got one right away uh, magical building blocks okay uh, what we're gonna need is some of this I believe so let's put that in right yeah, there you go. Oh, no, there's more. Uh, put that back. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, anyway, we're, let's get some of that. Maybe some of these. Uh, some of that. Try a few things. Go with that. Yeah. Uh, some of these. Yeah. Yeah. Some of these. Yeah. Oh God, I completely forget. Uh, we, let's just try a few random things. What a no and no okay I'll be right back when I figure out what we need okay I'm back and uh, we need these two things right here Fabrico and Lignum I believe so there's that and boop all right so now we got magical building blocks. You have been studying ways to combine stone, wood, and metals to create building materials suitable for the crafting of mystical objects and constructs. Alright, so now that we got that, let's open it up right here. Here's what we need. Four thomium and five stone. That gives you eight, and you need 20 of each. So, you have found a way to merge the strength of stone with the resiliency of thomium. The result is a block quite resistant to daily wear and tear. More importantly, these arcane stone blocks are perfectly suited for the creation of magical constructs and structures, including beacon bases. So, you can use them for beacons, I guess. The lattice of thomium that forms the core of this block allows it to be easily transformed into a myriad of configurations. I've also discovered a technique of engraving and enchanting wood, allowing it to be used for similar purposes. Alright, so now we got arcane wood block, arcane wood block again. Oh, God. Alright. By placing four arcane stone blocks together, as shown on the right, and infusing them with Vs with a wave of your wand, stones will merge together into an infusion altar. The infusion altar can be used to perform any crafting a normal workbench and arcane work table can. In addition, it is able to infuse certain creations with mystical aspects, allowing for the creation of objects of greater magical power. To do this with the infusion altar requires a source of aspects. A crucible is a good example of one such source. After placing the components in the altar, you should get an idea of what aspects are required to create the object. Continue. If there is a source of those aspects nearby, you should be able to craft the item. It should be noted that a single type of aspect can only come from a single source. The infusion altar cannot draw that aspect from multiple sources to reach the required amount. 
Different aspects can come from different sources, though. If the source is a crucible, you should note that once the aspects are drawn away from it, any remaining aspects might be spilled into the RS flux. Shift clicking to create multiple of an item will only cause a spillage at the end of the creation process, allowing you to grab multiple. Ugh. <sighs> okay. Uh, we got some thalmium. We got some thalmium. One, two, three, four. We got some stone. We don't have stone. Uh, stone. All right. So let's go in here. We need one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. With our wand, and we get arcane stone blocks. Okay, so basically what I was saying is, boom, 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 boom. Whoops. And boom. And shabam! You got yourself an infusion altar. So, uh, when you research things, such as these things or other tools, you need the required items, vs, and aspects as well. You're gonna get the aspects by putting them in crucibles and stuff like that. So, let's toss these in here. And let's try to research something else. So we can show you. Alright, what do we have? Thalmium scoop. Okay. Let's put some of that in there. Okay. Uh... Let's get some of these. No. Uh, let's get. Oh. Uh. We need a few of these, I believe. Oh God. Blah 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 blah. Let's just. Snag a few. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, we got one more. There you go. Oh. Uh, it is possible to improve the durability of the scoop by creating them out of sterner materials. While you're at it, it may be helpful to enable them to be channeled with restorative magics. Uh, what are we got it at? Um, I think we need the food. Victus. No. Nope. <laughs> Whoops. Boop. No. Nope. Already not even there. Be right back. Alright, I got it. What we needed was the Bestiola, which is basically... Ugh. Stupid family. My sister's, like, laughing in the other room. Not sure if it's picking it up or not, but it... Jesus Christ. <sighs> she needs to shut up. Anyway, uh, boop. So uh, we got four sticks, two thalmium ingots, and one wool. So one wool. Two of them. And um, okay, I would. Make some sticks really quickly. Uh, oop. Plus that, and you got bam, thalmium scoop. So, um, this is used like. <sighs> 
Alright. Give me a minute. Alright, I think I fixed the problem. Anyway, um, I realized I forgot to read the entry. This improved scope is more durable than the plain one your non-magical beekeeping friends are liable to use. It is good for three times as long as the average scoop at the cost of using some thomium instead. Because the thomium is present in its discussion, it is probable to possible to enchant the scoop with a repairing spell in the usual manner. Okay, so this is with the like beekeeping stuff. Um, scoops are used for like here we go. So you go up to these little fellers, these little beehives right here, and you right click now, left click. Yeah, you gotta break them. Okay. Break them with that, and you got yourself some nice little princesses and drones. So that's basically what Scoop does. It's basically a norm Scoop, except it's got more durability and better in chance. So, uh, just toss that in there. The next thing we are trying to go for will be that right there. So we're going to need some thomium probably. And a lot of picks. So let's just go right for the picks. Right off the bat so we can get that out of the way. Boop boop. Alright. Uh, let's snag a few more. 87% are you kidding me? Um, here we go. Grab some of that. Alright, so now we're gonna need some magic in it. Um, we might need these guys again. Not positive. Alright, save some time. Anyway, we got the grafter, which is this improved grafter. It's more durable than the plain one your non magical aberrant acquaintances tend to use in their exploits. It should be possible to allow them to be enchanted with repairing magic to make them last indefinitely. Uh. I think it's. I think it's the. Uh, what's it called? Herba, right? Yeah, it is her, but okay. Alright, come on, you're almost there. Yeah, alright. Just read that, and shabam. Adding thomium to your grafter designs has increased its durability significantly, up to two times longer than regular grafters. It is also possible to enchant them with a repair chain, giving sufficient experience. So, um, as you can see here, it requires 160 Vs, and you do not have a power enough wand yet, so you're going to have to hold off on making that, but uh, you will eventually get a stronger wand that can hold a lot more, um, a lot more Vs, but anyway, the grafter, you use it to, um, get more seed, I mean not seeds, saplings from trees. So yeah, that's that. Um, we'll go for this little fella right here, and I believe I know the aspects, so I'll just grab the stuff real quick. Okay, so now what you're going to need is first of all magic, and hopefully we got it. Um, now, the second thing you're going to need is this one right here, which is cognici Cognitio. And the final one is Machina. Did I run out? Oh, no, I have more. Okay. So we got that. And then right in here. And we got ourselves a thumb meter. You believe this, this mystical device? Hold on. You believe this missile device will point you in the direction of nearby sources of magical energy. Boop. Uh, let's just toss that back in there. 
as you as you saw, hopefully in the top left, we got an achievement and it said basic crafting completed or something like that. So we now have this. You have tinker with a combination of various metals and mystical substances enough to have gained a basic grasp of how things felt fit together. It has been days since you last blew something up by accident. I feel confident enough to start experimenting with bigger, better things. We will get into this next episode and this basically branches off into everything. Mystical music. This branches off into everything else in the world. So basically we've conquered the basics. Um I still have no idea what this B cake and stuff is. But anyway, yeah, thermometer. The thermometer acts like a mystical compass pointing you towards the center of the nearest magical aura. You are confident you will be able to craft more refined devices in the future, allowing you to discover more information about our nodes. For now, this will have to do. 4 gold, 1 water shard, and 20 vs. Uh, wrong chest. Alright, so we need one more. Oop, and one, two, three, four with the shard and some vase, and bam! We got ourselves a thermometer. It's basically, this thing's like a compass. Uh, the dark part there on the left, that is the bottom. And the uh, lighter uh, end there on the right, that is the top. So you want to go towards the lighter side. So this will be pointing us this way. And right, oh god. Right here we got ourselves an R node. That's kind of why I made my house right here. Because, you know... It helps with the flocks in the area and it increases the R. It basically leads you to these things. If you don't have the goggles of revealing, it's not here. So basically, this is helping to find good areas with high R and magical things like so. Uh, there are other uh, items, I guess you could say, within the world. Uh, no, nah, it's a cactus. There's like a, um, totem pole thing that spawns randomly that also boosts the aura. So let's toss that guy in there. And, ye and yeah, so that's, uh, the end of this episode. Next one, we will go in for this guy right here, which will then branch off to the rest of what we got. And there's a lot of hidden stuff. This isn't even close to what's there. So, yeah, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you later.